So hi everyone, it's uh, Charles and uh, Mike Wims, and uh, we're down here in lovely Key West, Florida, where Mike runs his own company, Indoor Environmental, is that what it's called? Indoor Environmental. And uh, Mike has been in the air quality business since 2001, and we thought we'd share with you uh, a, a little bit of Mike ex Mike's experience using uh, our bioblaster equipment and some of his experiences with an organization you folks may be considering called the NOAI, which is uh, an organization I conceptualized and then was uh, had a uh, pulled out from underneath me by a certain gentleman named Mark Tipton. And uh, so, Mike, you've been using my BioBlaster ozone machines for some time? For a year. And uh, the, the way I found you is I was given a recording uh, where Mark Tipton told uh, some folks, and apparently has been telling some folks, that uh, one of my BioBlaster machines uh, burnt down or nearly burnt down one of your commercial buildings. And uh, so I came to you, you know, all the way to Key West, Florida from Ohio to get your take on that. Did you ever have one of my machines burn down one of your properties? No. No, I, I've had a, a machine uh, catch fire, but it was from, it was from Japan. Can you repeat that just a little bit louder, just yeah. in case we're on a busy um, street corner? My, my machine never burnt down. Um, it was actually a machine I bought from Japan. Uh, it was in, the, in a friend's house. I was trying it out, and we left, and it actually caught on fire. Uh, as far as the biozone, um, I've used the biozone a lot in schools, uh, gymnasiums, and I only have one machine right now. You're talking about the bio blaster that I make. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it was a 20, 28,000 milligram. So you did have a machine that did almost catch fire. Yeah. It was from Japan. Yeah. It was really. Was not my machine. No. And you've used my machine. I've used your machine. Um, In fact, you sent me some nice pictures of, yeah. of my machine inside a, a daycare center. Yeah. You've done. You did like pre and post sampling, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I always do. So you always do? Always. Oh, and, and you've been able to see that just one application of ozone at, at high parts per million yeah. is enough to knock down viruses and bacteria. Yeah. Um, the last school that we did, the picture that I sent you was actually uh, odor removal. Odor removal. Um, they had a problem with you know, diapers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I went in there and I ran the machine for about 30 minutes, came back and the whole entire place had this moving. So, when you ran our BioBlast, uh, a blue haze of ozone gas. Which I've never seen. Um, uh, needless to say, we did do pre and post, uh, because I always do it like, curious to find out what uh, different people do. Uh, they had natural things in the house called Stacky. Stacky, Botrys, Charcharm. That's the black mold, if you yeah. folks aren't familiar with that. Uh, they weren't aware of that. Um, but the counts were, like, I mean, just ridiculous. High. Really high. And the catch stack in the air is really difficult. It's very difficult. Very difficult. It's usually an older yeah, water cool. issue that's yeah. dried up to get airborne today. Yeah. But um, needless to say, um, when I got the results back, um, after running the machine for about an hour and a half, um, my raw counts were down to like one or two. So you went from thousands to one or two in an hour and a half treatment. Yeah. And this is a 3,000 square foot building, I think yeah. you told me. 3,000 square feet. And I rate that 28,000 at 3,000 square feet. So in the one and a half hour treatment, you were able to not only develop a bluish haze of the gas, you were able to analog high counts of airborne mold at the beginning of the treatment. And at the end of the treatment, you were down to one or two reports, which were probably not viable. Yeah. Or more than likely yeah. they were dead. I had an air scrubber in there. It wasn't, it wasn't, I went in with the intention to get rid of it. Yeah. But I just did the three and four Well, that's great. You, um, you killed it, you knocked it down, you sucked it up. Yeah. So I was, I was really surprised about that. Um, were your, was your customer happy? They were very happy. Very happy to the point where I'm actually treating the school. You are treating uh, the high school, middle school, all elementary schools, all the way from the all the way to the field. So you're treating all.
all the high schools, all the middle schools, and all the elementary schools, yes. from Key West to Key Largo. That's pretty much all the keys. All the keys. So, you're kind of successful at this business. Yeah. And, um, you mentioned to me that not only do you use ozone, but you rely a lot on hydroxyl generating. Yeah, so a lot of the times, um, if I'm dealing with an area where I can use the up a lot more equipment. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So being able to go in in an hour and a half for those zone is, uh, yeah. in some cases, far more efficacious, even yeah. though the hydroxyls get the work done. Yeah. And this is what I've been telling people for years. I personally am a fan of hydroxyls, yeah. um, especially in air ducts. Yes. Um, yeah. But a lot of hydroxyl manufacturers will tell people that they're blowing the hydroxyls into the space, yeah. like an ozone generator blows ozone gas into the space. But the, the hydroxyl reaction, folks, is just way too fast for them. Yeah. It's a split second, uh, simultaneous reaction, almost. And so that means that the reaction is literally happening inside the machine itself. Yeah. So for you to get efficacy with a hydroxyl generator, it's got to be able to process that air. So it's got to suck that air through that machine, react with the air, and then it has to move all the air in that space through the machine to treat it. You that? So you have to get it in out. I use a lot. A lot of times I can't use the talk a little bit about, for guys that are you know, looking to start this business or are um, maybe just getting started, about the kind of markets that you address. Because what I really like about you, Mike, um, besides the fact you're kind enough to give me this interview, is that you're broad thinking. You go after all the markets you can think of. So, can you tell some of the guys out there exactly, you know, the kinds of, of customers that you've done work for and where you target for your bread and butter? Who makes you your bread and butter? And what are the weirdest kind of things you've ever done? Um, I try to hit everyone. What I do is I, I target one market. First start, I target one market. I say, okay, this one I'm going to do real estate, real estate. This is in your marketing. In my, in my area, in my town. Um, you know, take a look at your city, wherever you live at, look at, do you have a lot of hotels, do you have a lot of rentals, what do you have a lot of, you know, in your community that you can actually hit. So, here in Key West, we have a lot of rentals. Tons of rental companies, it's a vacation time. So, I hit up all the realtors, introduce myself, uh, tell them what I do, and uh, when we get in there, we can search in there. So you're you're targeting vacation rentals. Uh, that's one area, and and you got to the rentals through the realtors. Yes. So do you go to any kinds of um, you know those uh, meet and greet morning uh, lead generation type of clubs, or how did you address the realtors when you first found them? You joined the realtors. So. associations. You also spent about 1800 bucks. you said, yeah. to wrap your vehicle. And that has paid itself over in spades. So much so you're going to rewrap it again. And uh, you, does your phone ring daily, weekly, monthly from that truck wrap? 
constantly ringing right now. My voicemail is full. Voicemail is full. Um, it constantly rings. Uh, I have realtors calling me. Sometimes they just call me and ask me questions. Um, it's always good to get you know, you get something for free, but in the end, they're gonna call me later and give me a job. And so I'm not losing anything. So the biggest way to make money um, is is not to try to sell the business. Sell the benefits. Sell the benefits. Sell that sizzle. Don't sell the steak. Yeah. Um, sell the benefits of it. You know, for instance, I had a, a home about two weeks ago. I really, really could not sell this home. Sell it. Yeah. So a contractor came and said, oh, we're going to have to rip off the walls, rip off the carpet. We're talking five grand. Yeah. So I came in and I uh, was like, if I can get rid of this owner, more than just an ozone tree. Doing more than ozone. I'm, I'm selling a package deal as well. Okay. I'll go in, I'll, I'll, I'll do an assessment, I'll try to put an assessment. Um, after I do my assessment, I come up, I give them a game plan. This is what we need to do. X to do X to Z. Yeah. Uh, this is what we need to do to treat it, prevent it, and keep it clean. So what are some of the credentials that you have? I, are you a certified uh, mold inspector? Um, I'm an inspector assessor. Uh, So that gives him a lot more time with his family, in case you didn't hear that with the helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I'm i always looking for ways to target, uh, you know, more dollars, more markets. And you mentioned to me that you also do hotels. And what I really liked about it is not just that you're treating the hotels, but you do something that I've been recommending to a lot of my contractor customers for a while, and many of them not figured out how to do it. And that is you sell them on a package plan. Yeah. So you can offer them annual, biannual, quarterly, monthly, even weekly. And you make those options available to them and then let them tell you what they want. Yeah. And that's worked out for you. Yeah. It keeps me busy. Um, it's not only just here in Key West. I get a lot of business in Key West, and this island is only three by four miles. It's, it's a very small area. Very, very small, compact uh, tourist town. You can literally ride a bike around the wall. And there's tons of there. And there's two other companies there. So, for those of you that are worried about competition, this is something that Mike and I talked about on the phone. We've had a lot of our customers that are deathly afraid. Well. What if there's somebody else in my town that's already doing this? There's two other guys in a very small geography that you're trying to service. And your voicemail is full right now. You haven't been able to keep up with the calls. And you actually have friends with these other guys. friends with them. We're in the same um, uh, We're in the Chamber of Commerce. We talk all the time. We house things going. You know, what's this, you know, up, what's down. Uh, we talk. Uh, there's no problem because if I'm down, there's no time, I can 
always fall down on ego just to keep my guys busy. Um, whether it be cleaning or something, I'm always busy. Um, so you have guys that work with you, that's not just you. Yeah, I have four, uh, four guys, well, girls, that work with me. They're, they're just cleaners. Yeah. Um, but once in a while, I have them take equipment for me to drop off the stuff. someone finds you a job, you have a, like a bird dog program, which is what I would yeah. call it? Yeah, I give, I give them either, either $50 or $50. For, uh, for finding you a decent job. Yeah, I do that a lot with uh, AC. Air conditioning. Air conditioning contractors. So if you're looking for a good bird dog, Michael's targeted air conditioning contractors and it's paid off. If the company doesn't do duck okay. cleaning, uh, dirty ducks, people that are complaining about allergens, odors, this is what I'm looking for. If you run across this, please give them a call or write them in my phone. Simple as that. Uh, if it's a paying job, the technician gets 50 bucks, and if the end of the year, These are some really innovative marketing strategies. Do you ever do vehicles? I do a lot of vehicles. Uh, I was doing uh, car dealerships, but it was like, you were only getting like maybe four cars, five cars here and there, hit and miss. Um, so I, I kind of needed away from that. Once in a while I'll get a call, if I'm not busy, I'll go do it. I'll send somebody in. So what do you do if you don't go for the dealership? You do cars for the actual owners. I do owners' cars. Uh, I do uh, uh, commercial buses. Uh, I do a lot of yachts. And that that yachts. brings us to another point. Uh, yeah. If you live near water, boats are should be a special focus of your market. Yeah, big time. Uh, boats are on the water. Boats are always near humidity. That means there's always an opportunity for mold, viruses, and bacteria. Yeah. Um, I target high-end homes, bigger homes, for money. Um, I target yachts, bigger boat, for money. Simple as that. And I, I sell them the package deal. So, when you do a boat, you sell them on a package. That means a service contract. How many times will you do it for? So it depends on if they're local. Uh, that's a big thing. There's a lot of people that have come down here and they're only here for maybe six months. Okay. Or maybe a month. They're on vacation. Uh, I have people that call me from Miami. Hey, uh, I'm not in the US, but I'm travel. Charge from travel and go do the job. So, you sell houses on a package deal too. So you're selling them on an air, indoor air quality service package. You're never selling ozone treatments to anybody, are you? I sell them the benefits, and this is why I'm the benefits is like, well, I don't want to have to come, to come back here and redo something. I want to do it right the first time. A lot of my customers say, well, I don't want this. We need this. Because a lot of times they only need one thing. You know, I call that the Mark Twain philosophy. So Mark Twain said that bad news travels halfway around the world while the good news is still putting on its shoes. And in business, you better believe that's true. Yes.
So your reputation is something you need to cherish. You need to under promise and over deliver for your clients. And when you do that, it's hard to fail in business. But what I really like is that you're never looking for a one-off sale. You're always looking to sell the service agreement, to set up the relationship, to come back again and again. And let's face it, we all keep on breathing and our HVAC systems keep on blowing. That means new pathogens are being introduced and that means they need repeat service contracts. Just like any other trade out there. Plumber comes in your house, puts in a shower, eventually you're going to need to change it. Well, I, I love that idea. So, uh, Michael, you've really covered a lot of different marketing bases uh, for these guys. Are there any other uh, markets that you'd recommend that people target uh, if they're looking to build their business? Just getting into it. Uh, like I said, you got to do the research first. Find out what's available, what's around you in your area. What do you have a lot of? Is there a lot of car dealerships? Okay, if you got a lot of car dealerships, you target that. There's a lot of rental homes, target that. Uh, start off with something easy. Uh, start off with your warm market. People you know. Uh, hey, let me treat your car. So did you do a lot? That's a good thing. Did you yeah. give away a lot of jobs when you were getting this business going? I gave going? away a lot of jobs um, just to get that, uh, just to get, you know, I want to make my people I know happy. Yeah. If I can make them happy, then I can make them happy everyone else. So you, you sort of work your learning curve out on your friends and your family. Exactly. And then got comfortable using your equipment and talking to people and doing that kind of thing. And then went at it. Yeah. And um, if they're happy, you make your friends happy, they're going to they're gonna advertise for you. That's right. Yeah. My biggest uh, marketing right now is Facebook. Uh, meeting with people, social events. It's, it's in, in front of you. So you really focus on social media and then socialization, face-to-face yes. -face networking, exactly. and it works. It works. This is the type, because it's really hard to explain this type of business. It's not, a, not everybody knows that this service is out there. And that's the reason why I really think that people in this industry should focus on indoor air quality, like you have, and not on ozone treatments. Ozone has too many bad wraps associated with it, even though it's just it's just oxygen. Let's face it, it's oxygen. But because it's just oxygen, you can sell that you're doing an indoor air quality service, helping people breathe easier, and you're using the power of oxygen to get it done. But. Uh, just for a couple of minutes, I'd like to go over your experience because uh, you are a member of NOAI and you met Mr. Mark Tipton and uh, you gave him some money to become uh, a regional, I believe. So tell the people that are out there, you know, I've dealt with a lot of other guys that have been sold a bill of goods. And when they opened the package, it wasn't what was promised. What was your experience like with uh, National Ozone Association, Mark Tip? Well, when I was first was called about the uh, organization, uh, it was ground floor. You know, so I had friends and you know, organizations form in there and we just started. Um, but the way he explained it was, you, know, you can get in at the ground floor, you pay the search, you know, it would be $1,500. And I told him, well, I want to cover from Key to Atlanta. I want to basically franchise my business. Yeah. Quickly. Already had a manufacturer. And uh, it didn't go down. So you made a deal with Mike Bar Tipton to basically franchise your business and the hydroxyl machines that you were using. 
and uh, you gave him a, a fee to become a regional. He promised you Key West to Orlando. How'd that work? Oh, uh, come to find out, it was about maybe, I met maybe three or four people that have a little shop in Orlando area, which is not a bad so he sold you on a protected territory, told you if anyone came into that territory that they were going to come in under you and that you'd be getting a fee. That's what he told uh, Mr. David uh, Phillips, I believe was his name, in Gainesville. He told, told him the same thing. Yes, but and then I found out that basically what was happening is he was selling the package. Telling them the same thing. So he basically sold the same territory over and over again to multiple businesses and made the same promises to all of you. How'd that make you feel? Oh, it made me feel like crap, but not that there's more businesses out there. Right, you told, we talked about that. You don't mind competitors. I don't mind competitors. Um, it's just a, the fact that I, I spent a certain amount of money to get something. That's not what I got. So, and you've had occasions to have uh, face to face dealings with Mark Tipton. And, uh, you know, I know the story he told about me and my ozone machines burning down your property. Is there anything else that he told you that wasn't true? Um, as far as you? No, anything related to what you were going to get, what you were going to buy, how the website was going to yeah. work. Well, the website was supposed to work. He set it up. I had to change it twice. He set it up. It was a really nice website. But the only problem I had with the website is my number was really tiny. So I really couldn't see my phone number. Like, you know, I had to really look to find it. And then when you go to contact, it has my name at the top of the company name. But when the customers would put their information in there, they want to come to me. They went to who? I don't know. So it must have went to him. So he built you a website. Looked pretty nice. Yeah. Made your phone number really tiny. Made a big contact form. And when people fill out the contact form, you don't get the lead. The only reason I know that is because I have to go to the site and put their information in and I want to get an email. Well, this isn't theory. You tested this. I tested it. Yeah, and you're not the first person that I've been told that. I've told that to. Uh, actually, I had a customer that called me that was looking at uh, Mark's uh, deal and looking at my bio blasters and um, he heard that from someone else. <coughs> so he tested it. He went to your website, he put in his contact information, and he got a call from Mark Tipton, not from you. So, <coughs> I've heard some people speculate that his Call Remy service is really nothing more than all the websites that he's built for all these people in his organization out there gathering leads, which he then tries to sell back to you that came in on the contact forms on the websites that you paid him to give you. So not only do I pay for the regional thing, fifteen hundred dollars, I pay for the website, and then I pay because I had to make some changes to the website. So I'm paying for a website that I can't do anything. The only way I'm going to get a call on the website is if somebody actually sees my phone number. And he won't make it bigger. Yeah. I talk to him about it. So yeah, we'll make it. So, pretty much every time you try to get anything that identifies you, your brand, and your phone number on the website, you're getting no response. But anything that drives people to that contact form is big and easy to find. But the contact form doesn't go to you. So, were there anything else that you went to that national conference? Um, went to the conference and... Um, you heard him bashing me there? Yeah. Um, went to the conference and then, um, he had this new thing he wanted to start this call for me thing. Oh, 
or Remy. And um, he had these signs, he's got cardboard signs. So, okay, well, why was, why was he going to do this, this thing? So, so you do a job for a customer, you buy a sign from him, it says yeah, call Remy on it, <laughs> so you then gave you the sign, you buy the sign, and then you advertise call Remy, and then it's not your phone number, it's call Remy's phone number, and then they sell the leads back to you. So basically the, the marketing plan for call Remy is, you do work, you generate the referral, you pay for the privilege, and then he sells you the lead back. That's how he explained it to you. Well, he never explained it to me, but this is how he explained it to you guys. One to five dollars a lead. But I don't see myself buying the signs so that I can just pay more money. So if you bought a sign, you'd buy a sign and advertise indoor environmental, like yeah. it says right there on your shirt. Exactly, which I do. I have motor signs. And you generate a lot of leads that way. Every job I do, I leave a company sign. How long do you get the customers to leave the sign there? Just the duration of the job. Just during the job. Okay. Just to say that, hey, I'm here. Did you ever experiment with those little uh, $8 signs, leaving them there for a while? Or uh, I don't giving the customers a little kickback for doing that? Right? Uh, no. I don't do that um, because I, I think of me. Uh, somebody told me, hey, can I leave my sign here? And, you know, especially in my house, I have a nice house. I have a nice house. Okay, but you leave a sign there during the job. Yeah, during the job, yeah. Um, I have these big plastic signs that pop out. I'm going to the sand so they don't move. And they don't really leave it right now. Nicer than the $40 paper sign, the cardboard sign. So. With your NOAI, National Ozone Ex uh, Association experience, to recap, sold you a bill of goods that wasn't what you received, made a website for you with a contact form that doesn't go to you, won't put your personal business details on the website even after repeated uh, requests, won't upsize your phone number so people can actually read it, um, made character misrepresentations about my equipment at the show to your belief because you own my machine it doesn't it's not like you said um, is there anything else you'd tell anybody that's out there looking at you know investing five thousand dollars which is quite a bit of money it's a lot of money to invest um, have you seen his machines can you say anything about how they work compared to my machine i've seen the machines um and they're pretty much if you stick your hand in it while it's running i wouldn't do it um, there's a lot of uh, the fans, they're really small fans. They look like a fan, not even a computer fan. They're really small plastic fans. Um, really junky fans. The junkiest well, fans I've ever seen. They don't really move a lot of airflow. Uh, and the transformers are exposed to the actual ozone. Yeah. Um, and the transformers are too close to each other, which is going to especially fry themselves. Yeah. So, it's a really cool design. Um, your machine, I was happy with uh, my motor died. Yeah. Um, um, but you know, I can get a new motor and shock or something. But, um, well, it's under warranty. That's the great thing about yeah. our machine is we we give you the only true bumper to bumper warranty in the business. And you actually happen to buy your machine when we were using the blower and our blower manufacturer switched motors on us. Yeah. And so we got rid of that, changed to a 90,000 hour life fan. And we upgrade people for free. What could be more fair? And at the new designs, which you haven't seen yet, which you're about to see, never have fun. So, would you recommend people join the National Ozone Association? Are they going to get what's promised if they if they I buy in? I would not recommend joining. Um, I would not recommend joining. I get calls 
from the National Auto Zone Station, members, crew members, folks that they call me. Um, I used to tell them all the time. They, they wouldn't ask me about the social media, they just ask me about, hey, how do I get my business done? I'm the type of person, if I'm not busy, I'll talk to you. This is what I did, you know, to, to get things started. And, and I'll charge you for it. Because I didn't have anybody to help me. Right. I, I learned by trial and error, you know, what to do and what not to do. Sure, so yeah. have I. Like leaving an uh, ozone yeah, machine in a home that has a ten thousand dollar painting that's made of wax. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it changes color. It got dark. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. Only so had to pay like three hundred. And just like we're happy and had to get a job. You learn from your mistakes. People call me up. I talk to them if I'm not busy. So you're saying that the benefit the people that would join the National Ozone Association get is they get to bug people like you that are good at doing it. But when it comes to the organization supporting you, I know what they're really good at. They're really good at trying to sell you more stuff. How often do they try to sell you more stuff? More products and love. circumvented you, you gave him something that you, the two of you could market together, and then he circumvented you, went behind your back to the manufacturer, now he's selling that product. Now he's selling that product, he sells it on the Same, kind of the same thing he did with me, lying to people, we edited the ozone technician course that he offers, which is all my basic information, it modeled all of his programs on information for myself and my customers. BioZone uh, product is really a rip-off of like a sanitized system. When I say a rip-off, it's a direct model uh, that I created many years ago. And, um, you know, you know a little bit about that BioZone. Speaking of BioZone, it's a product that he says is the cat's meow, that it's going to work through mechanical deactivation where the viruses and bacteria get a hole punched in them. Um, I investigated organosilates when I was creating the Get Sanitized system, and I rejected them. And I rejected them because they're really poisonous, uh, to the applicators especially, and the people that are around them when they're drying. And, uh, you know, Mark has in his literature, you, all you need is a paper respirator to apply them. But when you look at the MSDS, it says you need a uh, SCABA, which is a self-contained breathing apparatus yeah. like a fireman would wear. Yeah. Um, you know a little bit about that product. It's yeah. kind of toxic. Yeah, it's toxic. Um, um, I've only bought one just to try it out. Um, went out and got the decals from my truck and everything. It's, you know, it's going to be a toxic product. But, I only use it once. What happened when you used it? When I use it, um, it flaked off. It flaked off? Yeah, it was like, you spray it on and it doesn't stay on the surface. It doesn't stay on the surface. adhere to some of the surfaces and uh, what do you think about the biozone product? I don't use it. You don't use it? I use Anabec. You use Anabec, yeah. And I, we talked about it. Anabec is a really good system. Now, I mentioned to you about... Keep, up, keep, keep taking a look at our videos, folks. You'll see the new stuff we've got coming. But uh, I just want to thank you. I don't know if there's anything else you've got to say to people that are watching this video, but yeah, just be careful um, with the organizations that you uh, join. Um, 
yeah, do your research. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, do your research, especially if you're just starting out. Don't, don't just stick with one company. Uh, I thought it was going to be a good thing, and it turned out to be a waste of money. <laughs> a waste of money. Well, thank you so much, mister. I appreciate your time, Mr. Wills. Thank you for being so patient. Thank you for being so patient. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys at further episodes.